Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the K value in relative volatility. These two parameters are usually associated with distillation. So if we consider the K value first, this is essentially, when we talk about uh, multi-component mixtures, it's essentially the tendency for the a compound, so here we've just called it the ith compound, but this can be any one, within the mixture to vaporize and it can be defined as this equation here. So it's the mole fraction of the component I in the vapor phase divided by the mole fraction of the component I within the liquid phase. So it's essentially the ratio of how much of this compound is in the vapor phase compared to the liquid phase. Now a high K value of the component means that it will be in the vapor phase because if we look at this equation, if we have a high amount or a high mole fraction of that component in the vapor phase compared to the liquid, this overall value will be, will be significantly higher than vice versa. So high values tend to say that the component will reside in the vapor phase, whereas low values of K will be in the liquid phase. Now, a K value of 1 that means that the component will eventually split equally between the two phases. So, if we say here that the K value is the ratio, then therefore, if the K value is 1, then we know that this would split equally between liquid and vapour. And the K values can be regarded as a function of the temperature, the pressure, and the composition or pressure determinant of the two variables fixes the third. Because what we are essentially saying here is that we know that the exchange, especially in terms of gas or the vapour phase, is highly dependent on the temperature and the pressure. Now likewise, the composition of the mixture, if we are highly concentrated in liquid or highly concentrated in vapour, and we have different boiling points within the material, this will have an effect on the K value for that specific component within the mixture. So by fixing two of these three, then therefore we can find the third value. Now the relative volatility of the two components, i.e. I and J, can be defined as the following. So what this means is this is alpha I J. So this is the relative volatility of component I into J. And if it was Gi I, it would be the relative volatility of Gi into I. And this is essentially the ratio of the K values. So we would have I to Gi, that means the component I K value would be on the top, and the component Gi hits K value would be on the bottom. So if this was the other way around, we'd have component Gi on the top, component I on the bottom. So that's how these two terms are related to each other. And most commonly what you will see is we talk about the relative volatility more than we do the K value. Now a high relative volatility means that one component will be more easily vaporised than the other, i.e. it gives an easy distillation. Now as the relative volatility moves near 1, the separation becomes extremely difficult because the K values will become very, very similar. So the more polarised that these K values are will give us a better relative volatility because the word relative here is specific to that component. So it's relative to the conditions that the, the environment is set up for. So if we look for, when we talk about distillation, we look for components with high relative volatilities because that means that a high relative volatility, if we have two components, the one with the higher uh, alpha value will reach here. So this is a high alpha value. The low alphas will fall to the bottom. So we know that the higher component with the relative volatility, that will go to the top of the column, and likewise the lower one will go to the bottom. Now binary systems are often denoted just with I and J, and these always can be referred to as 1 and 2. Now X2 if we consider that I is component 1 and J is component 2, then we know that the summation, so these are the mass or mole fractions in the liquid and the vapour phase respectively, we know that in the binary mixture, X1 plus X2 will equal 1. 
and likewise y1 plus y2 will also equal 1. So that's where we can relate the compositions um, between the two uh, components. And this is really easy for binary systems. When we have multi-component systems, it can get a bit more tricky. Now, we do have a full in-depth analysis of multi-component mixtures on our distillation course. So I'll put a link in the description to that and you can check that one out. Now, the two equations when we use the relative volatility equation, i.e. the ratio of K1 over K2, because remember, this is component I, component J. So that's why 1 over 2. Now, what we then do is we say that this is going to be equal to the ratio of the vapor phase and the liquid phase for component 1 multiplied by the ratio of the liquid phase to the vapor phase in component 2 because these are the other way around. So this would be the same as that, but because this is on the bottom of the fraction, we flip it upside down. Now what we can then do is start to replace for equations x2 and y2. So here we can replace this with 1 minus x1 and 1 minus y1, because if we have a mixture of x2 and x1, we won't necessarily know both of these values right away. We might know one of them, but we won't necessarily know the other. So therefore, we need to relate this in terms of just the uh, one component at a time. Now, what we could then do is from this point here, because this would be a bracket in itself, and this would also be a bracket in itself. What we can then start to do is create the equation in terms of the mass fractions for relative volatility. So if we carry out this uh, calculation, we just rearrange, follow the standard rules of mathematics, then we end up with this equation here. And this equation is how we can relate the vapor phase and the liquid phase against the relative volatility. And that is a very, very useful equation to use when we solve specifically distillation problems, but also for other uh, questions for other topics um, within chemical engineering. Now the last equation here gives us the mole fraction for the more volatile component. Now that's abbreviated to the MVC and you'll see this feature in the distillation courses. Even at your university you will hear the MVC or the more volatile component. And this is a function of its liquid and vapor mole fraction. So the vapor fraction is y, the liquid fraction is the x, against its relative volatility. Now that equation, if we plot this on an xy diagram, then what we have here is from 0 to 1, so that would be completely saturated liquid, from 0 to 1 here would be completely saturated vapor. So this is a 45 degree operating line. This is when y equals x. So that's this line here. Our equilibrium curve is this curve here. Now you can see that this looks similar to the other curves like the McCabe-Thiel method uh, when we come to soft distillation because again we're exploiting the relationship between the equilibrium curve and the operating line. So therefore, what we can then say is that if we know the value of x1, we just draw all the way up to the equilibrium curve across and we get y1. So that's a graphical means for uh, this system here in order to find the corresponding um, phase value. If we have the, the, the mole fraction in the liquid phase, we can find the mole fraction in the vapor phase. Now, by finding these values, we can also represent this on a VL data. So what this means is that the X and Y axis shown on the, the MVC and the liquid and the vapor respectively, the 45 degree angle represents the vapor liquid compositions in a hypothetical system, whereas the curve shows the equilibrium relationship. That's what we see. Now, a liquid mixture containing x1 mole fraction of the more volatile component, because remember, we talk about the more volatile component because that's the one that's going to vaporize first. That's the one that's going to go from a liquid to the vapor the quickest out of the two. Now, if the vapor is collected, the mixture will then be what's known as enriched for component 1. And this would go from x1. The initial concentration in the liquid phase to y1 
Now, it's equilibrium concentration in the vapour phase. So that's the Y1 for the vapour phase and X1 for the liquid phase. So we then get this enriched section. That's at the top of a distillation column. So this here is what's known as the enriching section. So again, we can relate this in terms of the mole fractions or potentially the mass fractions of the material. And then just a quick look at the effect that the relative volatility has on the equilibrium curve. Because here we have our perfect straight line of alpha is 1. So alpha is 1 is our perfect operating line when x equals y. When we start to change this, as we increase the value of alpha, we deviate further and further away from this idealized line. And you'll notice that values above alpha of 1 will always be in this direction. As you get significantly further away, what you'll see is that we change from a linear relationship to a more parabolic relationship. And we go into more detail as to why that is the case in our uh, distillation course. We also look at this in other parts of different courses uh, that you can check out as well. But this is very, very useful to see the relationship that the, the relative volatility has on the equilibrium line, because remember these are equilibrium lines, between a more volatile component, X and Y plot. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the concept of the K value and the relative volatility. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.